all physical objects, regardless of their temperature, emits electromagnetic radiation with specific range of wavelengths. Based on experiments, the object emits electromagnetic radiation with shorter wavelength when its temperature increases. Since this object emits electromagnetic radiation, let's call this object as emitter. On the other hand, if an external electromagnetic radiation lands on the surface of a physical object, some of it is partially absorbed and some of it is partially reflected. Of course, some absorbed electromagnetic radiation is emitted to the external surroundings. There is this theoretical object called black body that literally absorbs all electromagnetic radiation incident on it and then emits some of the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. In other words, there's no reflection going on when it is illuminated by an external electromagnetic radiation. Hence, it is a body that is a perfect absorber and a perfect emitter. If the temperature of this black body increases, that's because it keeps on absorbing electromagnetic radiation. If the temperature of this black body remains constant while absorbing electromagnetic radiation, then this means that it effectively emits the radiation to its surrounding to maintain the temperature. Of course, a black body is just an ideal model. In reality, some electromagnetic radiation illuminated on an actual body escapes in the form of reflection. And to effectively study the electromagnetic waves emitted by a black body, we must be able to siphon these electromagnetic waves into a sensor and record its physical characteristics like intensity, etc. To physically implement or realize a black body where we can siphon emitted radiation into a sensor, consider this cavity radiator with rough and blackened inner surface to effectively trap the incident radiation and control the direction of electromagnetic radiation emission. This is a container with a small hole where an electromagnetic wave can enter and be absorbed or reflected along its inner surface. Now in this setup, the reflection should be minimal and majority of the light rays inside it that you are seeing is actually emitted and not reflected by some particles lining along its surface. Now what you're seeing here is ideally the electromagnetic waves emitted by the inner surface. Sensors can easily detect the electromagnetic wave that will be emitted by this radiator because it will specifically come out from this hole. This radiator satisfies the condition that a black body is a perfect absorber because of its trapping ability. There are two things we can measure from this setup. The first one is the temperature of the black body and the second one is the intensity of the emitted radiation as measured by the sensor. The intensity measured by the sensor is a function of frequency and temperature. Here, the frequency nu refers to the frequency of the incident electromagnetic radiation and the temperature refers to the temperature of the black body. Let's plot the frequency versus intensity graph of a black body radiation from 300 GHz to 430 terahertz. This region is called the infrared region. From 430 terahertz to 790 terahertz, this region is called the visible region. From 790 terahertz to 30,000 terahertz, this region is called the ultraviolet region. When they feed the radiator with electromagnetic wave with a frequency below the visible region cutoff, the intensity plot for a radiator with temperature of 4,000 kelvins looks like this. And this is consistent with the fact that as you increase the frequency, you are increasing the energy fed into the radiator and hence the intensity it emits increases as well. For a temperature of 5,000 kelvins, the plot looks like this. There were two scientists, Rayleigh and Jeans, who provided an approximation for these results. And their equation is called the rayleigh jeans law. When they used this equation, they predicted the graphs for 4,000 kelvins and 5,000 kelvins at the ultraviolet region and these are shown with these dotted lines. They even predicted the graph for 6,000 kelvins and it looks like this. However, based on experiments, the graph for 4,000 kelvins gradually decreases and it looks like this. 
and not exponentially. Also, the graph for 5000 kelvins dies down at higher frequencies. What's more surprising is the result for 6000 kelvins. Also, based on the experiments, when the frequency is increased beyond the visible range, the intensity decreases. If you look at the Rayleigh genes equation, notice that intensities diverges to infinity for high frequencies as if the radiator releases disastrous amount of energy. And this catastrophic event takes place at the ultraviolet region. That's why this phenomenon is called the ultraviolet catastrophe. To explain this sudden drop of intensity at the ultraviolet region, Max Planck, a German physicist, made an assumption that atomic oscillations inside the cavity walls can oscillate in such a way they possess discrete amount of energy. With this assumption, he was able to derive what is known as the Planck's law of black body radiation. And this equation accurately predicts the results of the experiment, especially the decrease of output intensity in the ultraviolet region. From Planck's law, we can derive Wien's displacement law and Stefan's law. In Wien's displacement law, lambda sub max is the wavelength at which a black body radiates most strongly for a given temperature T. On the other hand, Stefan's law allows us to calculate the total power of black body radiation emitted across the entire spectrum of wavelengths at a given temperature. In these plots, this power is represented by the area under the black body radiation curve for a specific temperature. Here, sigma refers to Stefan Boltzmann constant which is equal to 5.67 times 10 raised to negative 8 watt per m squared times Kelvin raised to 4. A is the surface area of the black body and T is the temperature in Kelvins. Let's return to the radiation curve. This positive slope where intensity increases when the frequency of the supplied electromagnetic wave is increased is easy to comprehend. But this side of the curve is not easily explained by classical physics. Going back to our cavity radiator, Max Planck assumed that a black body consists of many charge oscillators that can take on specific energies. In his original paper, it wasn't specified if this charge oscillator is an atom situated on its lattice or an electron that is initially on its ground state. Either way, both particles can absorb, emit, or ignore an electromagnetic wave. If we're dealing with an actual atom, remember that an atom can be influenced by an external electromagnetic radiation because atoms consist of charged particles like electrons and protons. Max Planck assumed that charge oscillators can only vibrate in such a way it possess discrete amount of energy, or specifically, an integer multiple of h times f, where h is equal to 6.626 times 10 raised to negative 34 joule second, and f is the frequency of vibration. For example, if h times f for a particular oscillator is 2 electron volts, then the particle can only have energies of 2 electron volts, 4 electron volts, 6 electron volts, and so on. When an atom absorbs an energy from electromagnetic wave, it momentarily moves away from its equilibrium, and then it releases the energy, and then return to its equilibrium position. This repeated process of absorption and emission makes the particle seem to vibrate with respect to its equilibrium position. Similarly, when an electron, initially on its ground state, absorbs energy from electromagnetic wave, it jumps from its current state, releases the energy, and then returns to its previous state. Suppose the upper bound of our particle is 4 electron volts. Beyond this energy, the particle will not absorb the energy. If this exceeding energy is multiple of HF, the particle can absorb the energy, but it will use it for translation. In other words, when the energy supplied is beyond the upper bound, this can possibly be used by an atom to break free from the lattice point. This can be viewed as if the solid is melting, or it can be used by an electron to be ejected from its possible shells. So to explain this sudden drop, when the frequency or energy of the incident wave is not in the allowable energy states of the particle, the particle will simply not absorb the energy. 
and hence no emission occurs. And this will register as a low or zero intensity level on the sensor. Or when the energy of the incident wave is beyond the threshold of the particle but still a multiple of the particles h times f, then it will be used by the particle to completely break from its lattice point or various shells. In this case, there will be no radiation because the particle is no longer there. And this will register zero intensity level on the sensor. This quantization of energy is the start of a silent revolution in physics wherein at certain scales and condition, the transfer of energy is no longer continuous but occurs in discrete amount or packets of energy. And this is one of the underpinnings of quantum physics. This problem is from OpenStax University Physics Volume 3, Chapter 6, Photons and Matter Waves. Problem 55. A 200 watt heater emits a 1.5 micrometer radiation. What value of the energy quantum does it emit? Assuming that the specific heat of a 4.0 kilogram body is 0.83 kilocalorie per kilogram times Kelvin, how many of these photons must be absorbed by the body to increase its temperature by 2 kelvins? How long does the heating process in B take? Assuming that all radiation emitted by the heater gets absorbed by the body. So imagine in this problem we have a heater and it radiates an electromagnetic wave. In part B, let's just represent this 4 kilogram body with a solid cube. So according to the problem, this electromagnetic wave has a wavelength of 1.5 micrometer and this heater has a power output of 200 watts. So in part A, we would like to calculate for the value of the energy quantum. Actually, the energy of quantum radiation is given by this expression which is equivalent to E sub 1. So from Max Planck's expression, we can calculate the quantum energy when we are given with the frequency of an electromagnetic wave. So for this problem, we will calculate for the minimum quantum energy that an electromagnetic wave can have, which means that we have to calculate for E sub 1. To calculate the numerical value of this quantum energy, we have n equals 1 times the Planck's constant and the frequency. In this problem, we assume that the electromagnetic wave travels in air which is near vacuum so we can use the formula for the speed of light c remember that all electromagnetic waves travel in the speed of light in vacuum so c equals the wavelength divided by the period or lambda times frequency because the reciprocal of period is frequency given this expression f is equal to the speed of light divided by lambda so i can plug this expression here I'm supposed to have C over lambda here, but I'll directly write the numerical value, which is 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second, divided by lambda, which is 1.5 micrometer. And we have a numerical value of 1.3252 times 10 raised to negative 19 joules. We can convert this into electron volts by dividing this with 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And we end up with 0 0.83 electron volts. We might have different value for this depending on how you round off some of the given. In part B, we are given with the specific heat of this object. We can assume that the electromagnetic wave is completely converted into thermal energy when it is absorbed by the object. And from thermodynamics class, the thermal energy is equal to mc delta t. And based on the given, the object is able to absorb this electromagnetic wave and because of this absorption, its temperature is increased by 2 Kelvin. So delta t here is actually equal to 2 Kelvins. Now in part B, we are asked to find the number of photons that must be absorbed by the body to increase its temperature. So in photoelectric effect, you will learn or you learned that according to Einstein, electromagnetic waves are also quantized and the particle of light is called a photon. So if one photon possess E sub 1 of energy, then to calculate the number of photons that's being absorbed by this object, 
by virtue of conservation of energy, if after absorbing all this electromagnetic wave or all the photons landing on this object, then we just have to divide the total energy of that object with the individual energy of photon. And then after that, we will be able to calculate for the number of photons that is being absorbed by the object. So in other words, the total energy absorbed by the object coming from the electromagnetic radiation is fully converted into thermal energy. And to calculate for the number of photons, we have to divide this total energy with the energy of a single photon, which is E sub 1, and we will be able to calculate the number of photons absorbed by the object. So let's calculate for the total E. So the mass is 4.0 kilograms times the specific heat which is 0 0.83 kilocalorie divided by kilograms times Kelvin times delta T which is 2 Kelvins. So when this Kelvins cancel out, kilogram cancel out, and we end up with Q equals 6.64 kilocalories. Now from thermodynamics class, recall that 1 kilocalorie of energy is equal to 4,184 joules of energy. So to convert this into joules, Q equals 6.64 kilocalorie times a factor wherein that factor has a kilocalorie in its denominator so we can cancel this out so using this factor one kilocalorie equals 4184 joules so q equals 27,781.76 joules. So to get the number of photons, we just have to divide this total energy with this energy. So again, I need to convert this energy into joules because my denominator here is in joules. So I'll divide this with this value and I'll end up with 2.1 times 10 raised to 23 photons. So in part C, how long does the heating process in B take assuming that all radiation emitted by the heater gets absorbed by the body? So we're actually looking for the amount of time to absorb such energy. And from our discussion in mechanics, power is equal to the energy transferred per unit time. So rewriting this, we have T equals total energy divided by power and the total energy absorbed by the object is this one. So this is equal to 27,781.76 joules divided by power is already given 200 watts and time is equal to 138.91 seconds or 2 minutes and 38 seconds. So we might have different value depending on how you round off some of the given. But based on this calculation, time is approximately equal to 2 minutes and 38 seconds. This problem is from OpenStax University Physics Volume 3 Chapter 6 Photons and Matter Waves Problem 57. For what temperature is the peak of a black body radiation spectrum at 400 nanometers? If the temperature of a black body is 800 kelvins, at what wavelength does it radiate the most energy? So from our discussion of black body radiation, if the vertical axis is our intensity and the horizontal axis refers to the frequency of the input electromagnetic wave, then the black body radiation curve looks like this for a given temperature. But if our horizontal axis is converted in terms of wavelength, then the curve is just reversed since frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. And the relationship that relates wavelength with temperature is the wind's displacement law, lambda sub max times temperature equals 2.8 nine eight times ten raised to negative three meters times kelvin apparently lambda here is in meters and temperature here is in kelvins so in part a what temperature is the peak of a black body radiation spectrum at 400 nanometers so for example we have this 
plot and at a wavelength of 400 nanometers, this curve has this peak. So we are asked to find the corresponding temperature for this curve. So based on this wind's displacement law, temperature is equal to 2.898 times 10 raised to negative 3 meter Kelvin divided by lambda sub max which is, in this given, it's 400 nanometers. And plugging in the values, we have 7,245 kelvins. In part B, if the temperature of a block body is 800 kelvins, at what wavelength does it radiate most energy? So in this problem, we can use Wien's displacement law to calculate for the lambda submax, assuming that the block body has a temperature of 800 kelvins. So using this same equation, lambda submax equals 2.898 times 10 raised to negative 3 meter times Kelvin divided by 800 Kelvin equals 3.62 micrometer. So we might have a slightly different value depending on how you round off some of the given but in my calculation lambda sub max is equal to 3.62 micrometers. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!